move our focus to NSDC, one of the important stakeholders of this entire skill development ecosystem. We have with us Dr. Manish Mishra, Executive Vice President Strategy from NSDC. Let's hear him out. Over to you, sir. Good morning, and uh, thanks to the organizers for having me. Um, I think the, the topic for this uh, conclave couldn't have been more apt. And uh, we recently uh, hand handed over our G20 presidentship to now to uh, Brazil. And what we have done over last one year in terms of deliberating upon various uh, aspects of education and skilling that needs to be looked at in order to make sure that we prepare the workforce which is industry ready uh, and it has also come in form of uh, uh, the uh, the dec final declaration and also the education uh, working group has come up with its own report which is worth a read because uh, it talks about the efforts that are being made at the uh, OECD member countries level to understand as to what are, is being done and there's a lot, there's plenty that is being done, but there's a lot that needs to be done. Uh, just to understand the challenge uh, that this whole uh, industry 4.0, or for the matter, this AI and this modern critical and frontier technologies present before us. Uh, there's a PIAC survey that OECD does uh, frequently at the OECD level. It says that 70% of the workforce across uh, the OECD level, OECD country level, it does uh, use literacy skills to discharge their day-to-day -day work. And what they are telling you that only a quarter of that workforce is actually better in terms of using literacy skills than the AI of today. And AI is very recent emergence. We have actually started seeing applications of AI very, very recently. Chat GPT barely came about in year. I mean, remember 2022 is when it actually, uh, the commercial version was launched. And one is seeing the kind of ad adoption of uh, Chat GPT. And uh, one can imagine as to, what might happen if we don't really train the workforce to meet the challenges of all these emerging technologies. So when the Sundar Pichai says that the humanity has probably never seen something like or never dealt with something like AI and all these modern technologies before, he is absolutely right. And therefore, what we need to possibly do has to be very different from the way possibly we have been handling such challenges in the past. So there's hardly anything to uh, guide us as to what we should possibly do. Uh, just to uh, uh, give it a structure maybe, I, I thought uh, um, how can this academia, industry and governments come together in order to meet this challenge and deal with it and also prepare uh, our workforce effectively uh, in this uh, situation that we are in. I thought there are four things that possibly need to be looked at. One is this policy and thanks to Professor Rajiv Kumar, he talked about this policy framework of uh, NEP which actually gives you a, a, a very robust framework wherein various actors can come together. Uh, National Credit Framework has also come in to operationalize this whole NEP. Now we are seeing spurt of efforts like NHEQF and National Curriculum Framework and a Credit and Curriculum Framework that, is, uh, that has been uh, published and is right now in public domain for people to comment upon for UG and PG. So that is happening on the on the policy front, the whole governance front, wherein you need possibly to have uh, 
programmatic interventions that prepare people and one should actually start with something like uh, pre-secondary uh, education itself because you are talking about a country like India where the outcomes of uh, education need to be much better than what it is right now. There's a lot of effort that is being put in uh, place. Gujarat in particular is doing a lot of work and uh, and this uh, whole Vidya Samiksha thing that one had seen uh, quite a few months ago, that was a fantastic work that was being in that direction. And this Samagra Shiksha, the way it has been revamped and being taken to the schools, I think is also a very important step in that direction. What possibly needs to be done more is in the area of the post-secondary uh, education where the skills need to come up in a, in, in, in a big way and a more institutionalized way. And I'm sure AIPP is doing a lot of work there. We're talking about stitching together curriculum a lot with the industry and giving a lot of flexibility to the institutions to stitch up programs that are, that are actually in the, uh, uh, rooted in the reality of the uh, industry and business today. Um, uh, I think it will take some time, uh, and uh, but 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 our institutions would, given the kind of uh, regulatory framework and the guidance that is coming from all the way up, and also the kind of uh, uh, work that is being done in this area, would actually help institutions build things that are actually in the right direction. The second thing that I wanted to talk about is research, and that probably is very very critical. And uh, uh, we, we actually uh, got to know about various initiatives that are being taken all around the world. For example, in Australia, you are seeing some six trailblazer universities that are coming together, pulling the resources in order to create a body of research that can be used by the institutions to stitch together the programs. And that is actually being done in the active collaboration with the industry. Singapore, again, uh, presents a very good example where you're talking about, they're saying that the entire economy can actually be looked at it in three buckets wherein uh, you have a care, digital and uh, and green economies. But they're saying they're not only verticals, they're also horizontal. So all this, all the three actually need to be taught as part of every single program, right? So you look at them as various industry verticals, but this also constitutes a horizontal and the curriculum is actually being drawn up in such a manner in order to uh, do this. So while we're talking about technology and preparing the workforce for the future, for this technology, we also cannot keep our eyes away from this whole climate thing that we are talking about. So this also needs to be um, uh, made part of every, sing every single curriculum is what the need of the hour is. <clears throat> uh, in addition to this, what, what also needs to be done is uh, the kind of work that many of these non-government organizations are doing. So while we are talking about on one hand creating a huge public digital infrastructure in order to make learning available and made up at people's disposal, they can actually learn wherever they are. At NSDC, we have put together a, a massive platform called Skilled India Digital. And uh, that is putting together a variety of content from all across the uh, uh, to, to, to enable the learning and you can actually learn at uh, your convenience wherever you are. Uh, but at the same time, a lot also needs to be done in collaboration with a lot of other institutions that are working at the ground level, right? So, so their experience needs to be leveraged. There's quite a few organizations that are working in this area. Kevalya uh, Education is one. Pramal is doing quite, quite handy work in this direction. Uh, there are certain institutions that are working in the higher education space also, which uh, need to be leveraged. And, the, and this whole offline and online has also got to, be, got to come together. And there has to be somebody who needs to hold this all together in order to make it work better. Uh, Government of India's initiatives in this area of uh, like UA, UA AI and uh, some of the other work that Government of India is doing in order to make this uh, research uh, 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 based in the in the reality of the industry is also uh, very very uh, uh, praiseworthy. Uh, but I think this this research needs to actually transcend boundaries. The challenge is so such that no country alone can actually handle this, and therefore a lot of effort at the level of 
uh, various fora need to be taken up and this is this has been the spirit of the leaders declaration also at the G20 when we are saying that we need to pool resources uh, we have made a beginning by saying that we will identify the skill gap at the G20 level and also try and understand as to what we can possibly learn from each other in order to put together the knowledge that has been gathered separately by all the member countries and uh, that kind of effort is actually so in that uh, context I would say that it's not only about one government it's about multiple governments coming together and pooling the resources and knowledge etc in order to create uh, 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 a body of knowledge that everybody can benefit from. The third and very important aspect is that of financing. So who does it? Uh, governments are putting in a lot of investment, yes. AICT, uh, as Professor Rajiv Kumar said, and for the matter, some of the other parts of the government are also doing their bit in order to create these uh, public digital infrastructures, create these ecosystems, building capacity of the institutions, etc. Everything is being taken care. But the private sector resources also need to come in a big way uh, as far as the financing part is concerned. We need to create models. Uh, there are now, thankfully, and with NSDC, I, I, can, I can talk about the skill impact bond that we are doing and we have brought in a lot of private sector investment in order to create an outcome based training program in some of the priority areas. I think there's just one step in that direction uh, with social stock exchanges coming in, a lot of private sector money now being available for all these purposes. We need to create a framework through which the private sector participation can also be very, very active and uh, they can also um, uh, uh, participate in, in, in this, this massive initiative of uh, skilling people for the, for the needs of the future. Uh, so, so, so that is, that is one prescription that I have in mind and I'm sure these are, these are early days and a lot of, lot of these uh, models will expand and evolve and you would in future see um, uh, that the private and public sector given the kind of regulation that we, the regulatory framework that we now have and the facilitative, facilitative role that the government is now playing, coming together and working cohesively in order to take on this challenge in a massive way. So uh, with this, I will uh, pause and uh, uh, let's uh, uh, put together our uh, brains to finding solutions for this future because this 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 uh, challenge is massive and and we need to work together, think together, and uh, uh, act together in order to take on this challenge in a in a in a, in a, in a manner in which it will be better for all of us to. Uh, take this uh, um, the whole agenda of uh, uh, making or creating uh, India a 5 trillion dollar economy and way, way beyond that. So, yeah, so the challenge is massive, but at the same time, I think we all have the capability to ensure that we sail through. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Manish uh, Mishra from NSDC. Yes, challenge is... Uh, uh, there are challenges, huge challenges, but uh, it reminds me of what Honorable Prime Minister says that uh, let's see our challenges as opportunity. Uh, that day I was having a discussion with the former Defence Secretary of the Government of India. He was telling us that uh, people are talking about how AI is going to take all the jobs. But treat it as an opportunity because AI, uh, the, 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 the advancement of AI and if we can produce or deliver the skilled AI workforce, not only for India, for globally, it can be India's, uh, uh, again, what India has done for fintech, for global uh, condition, AI can be the same thing for uh, India, uh, not only providing skilled workforce for India, but globally, India can leapfrog in that. So maybe let's, we can see challenges and opportunities and work in that way. Thank you. Mm -hmm.